What is up ladies and gentlemen, many here, welcome back to the channel. I have been working on a new hangboarding setup, a new permanent setup for my hangboard training so to say. And that's why I wanted to make a little bit of a video about it since it has been finished recently. I have finished it recently and yeah, I thought I'd make a little bit of a, of a walk through, through all the features, all the things that are um, on there so far. Please keep in mind that this is basically the core essentials, I would say, that I need for my training. I don't really need anything more, basically, but there's a lot more space, as you can see, um, for little experiments that I'm going to make, maybe. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to discuss the mere essentials here in this video and show you a little bit um, how I did this and what materials I've used and so on and so forth. So let's start with um, the things that are on there so far. Uh, as you can see in the middle we have a very prominent one that's the Beastmaker 2000. To the right of this guy we have this guy here which is the uh, smallest campus rung of this Wood Grips, this Metorius Wood Grips company. And they, on their website they say it's 19 millimeters in depth but I measured it and it's actually pretty damn close to 18 millimeters in depth. It has a really nice rounding and it's slightly in cut when it is mounted on a um, perfectly vertical wall. So we've got a slightly in cut 18 millimeters edge here and it's, you know, the rounding is quite substantial. I have the feeling it's a big rounding, which is good on the one hand because it's um, kind of soft on the skin and on the other hand it makes the edge really bad. So this is roughly an edge that I can barely hang one handed with my right hand and with my left hand I cannot hang this one one handed still. So that's pretty nice, uh, a pretty nice training edge for my one handed max hangs. So when we move on to the um, Beastmaker 2000, uh, this is pretty much a classic of the of all of the wooden hangboards. I'm pretty sure you've seen that one before. The main reason why I bought this guy is because of the um, the, the lower uh, middle edge there, which is the classic one hang uh, one arm hang uh, Beastmaker edge. It's slightly in cut. I don't know the depth exactly, but I would guess it's around. Um, 18 to 20 millimeters as well. It's, it's kind of quite a, kind of similar to that Metolius edge to the right actually. And then we've got the small edges to the left and right in the below row there, which are really nice for doing repeaters and stuff like that. So yeah, I really like these a lot. The roundings are just perfect. The quality of the wood is just perfect. Very smooth, very nicely um, worked here. They, they mill out these things quite preci precisely. And it's also really beautiful to look at, I think, in a in a room like this. So let's take a look uh, to the left. Here we've got the Beastmaker Micros. And you know, I bought these things and so I thought I might as well make a little bit of a review, a review about them. The Beastmaker Micros, they are just very small edges. As you can see, there are 10 millimeters, 8 millimeters, and 6 millimeters. We're gonna take a look at these in a little bit more detail later on in this video, so stay tuned for that. So basically, this is for hanging on very small edges with, you know, making dead hangs with bonus weight or not. Um, I think that training on small edges is actually quite a lot more effective than training on bigger edges with, with bonus weight, especially if your goal is to get strong outdoors on rock, because as I've said previously countless times before, I think that outdoor rock climbing is pretty much cranking down small holes with uh, big distances between them. So let's take a look at the construction on which all these guys are mounted. I used just leftover plywood um, resources for making these boards. This is quite solid plywood. It's 24 millimeters in strength actually. And these weigh a lot. It's really solid stuff there. I mounted it on the front side with some very deep screws as you're gonna see in a second. And on the back side here I supported everything with these um, What's the word again? I always forget that with these angle brackets. These angle brackets actually didn't fit perfectly for my purpose, so I uh, milled them away with a flex, flex machine here on the lower side to make them fit. And now they fit perfectly in here and support this board kind of, kind of well, you know. I just wanted to prevent it from like bending to the back when I start hanging on there with some bonus weight and stuff. So I just wanted to increase the stability a little bit. And now it really feels solid, uh, rock solid basically. Now if we take a look at the front side, you can see the heads here of these, um, these big uh, construction screws basically for woodworking. And... 
I've used quite a few of these. I think I've used five per board, um, you know, mounted in a little bit of a of an alternate manner so that so that they don't split the wood. Here you can have a little bit of a close up, um, like what these these screws look like. As you can see, they are pretty substantial in size. But to be honest, I didn't use um, screws that are as long as this one that I that I'm showing here because that might be just an overkill. Still, I had to use quite long screws because I had the same problem as so many people have. I have a pretty big layer of, um, the best way I can call it, is these mealy hollow gypsum stuff, these re-gips walls, which they, which they, you know, mount on the surface to isolate the walls and stuff. You know, this stuff can't really hold any weight, so you need to get through that and need to get through to some solid um, base, basically. Now, in my case, this is a big layer of wood that's below that, but it's actually, I made, some, I made some test drillings and it's actually about 10 uh, or 8 to 10 centimeters behind the actual surface. So I had to get these really long screws to kind of drill into that, so to say, that, the, uh, that these actually have some meat to grab on. Now, on the other side of the room, you can see how um, these, how this basically looks before I mounted the boards. It's just like this and um, yeah, again, also in this case, there is quite a solid layer of this or quite a quite a big layer of this gypsum stuff. One thing I want to emphasize one more time is that there is still a lot of space left on these boards for additional holes. I think I'm just gonna experiment a little bit around with what I can find. As you can see here between the Beast Maker Micros as well, there's a lot of space left. And also to the left, there's a lot of space for another, let's say two holes or stuff. So again, if you can find anything with I should, uh, what I should experiment with, then let me know in the comments down below. One thing I picked up already is these um, these half circle um, LEDs basically from my local hardware store. I think these could be interesting because they really force you to push your weight down on your fingertips, you know. That's the only place where you can hold yourself basically. So these I think would be interesting. They are also available in quite a couple of uh, smaller sizes. And I think these could be actually really hard to hold on to. Now also another thing that I still need to do is between the, the Beast Maker and the actual, you know, the Beast Maker Micros and this one campus rung, there is still a little bit of a space. And I want to drill some bigger holes here in between because I want to mount some ropes there because I've got some residual rope left and I can use that to, um, you know, have kind of an assisting thing that I can grab onto when I do one-handed hangs. And then I also, if I, you know, mount them in a in a smart way, I can mount there some rings maybe um, for making exercise on the ground, on the floor, or maybe a, you know, mountable pull-up bar or a finger shinder or whatnot. So whatever you can mount basically on some kind of ropes. That's how everything looked quite uh, in the beginning. Just basically these two big black boards and this, this one little edge there, this one wood grip uh, campus rung with 18 millimeters in depth. And honestly, that's all you really need if you want to start out with hangboarding. One kind of comfortable wooden edge with a nice rounding and just the size that you need. For me, that's just ideal because I barely can hang this one one-handed with my strong hand and still not with my weak hand. So um, yeah, that's basically all I would need for training. But of course, that looks a little bit boring. So I got myself a little bit of a beast maker going. And, you know, a lot of people might be saying, Manny, you've built so many hangboards yourself already. Why did you buy now? Why did you get one, uh, you know, from the store basically now? And really the whole point um, in buying a Beast Maker is to have a standardized set of holds basically. Because I can be sure um, that the holds on this Beast Maker are the same holds as on other Beast Maker 2000s. Which means I can compare my results, my hanging results with other people all, all around the world, you know, which have, who have a Beast Maker 2000 as well. So that's really the whole point um, for me in buying these products. And we're going to talk about this, I want to hit this on the head a bit more when we talk about the micros real, real quickly. One more thing I want to mention is that this is not a sponsored video or anything like that. I just bought these Beast Maker products for the same price as everyone else. And yeah, I just want to make a little bit of a review, a review about it, you know. And about the Beast Maker 2000, I can't say anything bad, really. 
I mean, it's an awesome product. It looks nicely. Um, the holes feel super smooth, really nice um, quality of the milling there. We've got nice roundings everywhere. The monos are nice. The two finger pockets are nice. So I think that's a lot of room to experiment with a couple of hangs and uh, bonus weight and stuff. So yeah, I'm looking forward to these sessions on this thing. So let's move on to the Beastmaker Micros because these are actually really interesting. I first um, saw these things, these guys, when uh, I, I saw Dai Koyamada, I think was it, who hung the smallest edges with a ridiculous amount of bonus weight, both handed, I think. And I thought, hey, okay, this guy's onto something. You know, training on super small edges might be the key for um, hard outdoor rock climbing. So it could be interesting to get just exactly these edges as well and see how much how much I can hang from these edges, basically. And yeah, as you can see, they come in kind of a, of a nice, neat little case there. Um, they also get the screws in addition, uh, additionally as well, which I think is really nice because then you don't have to think about getting screws uh, separately. And as you can see here, I wanted to mount them left of the actual Beastmaker 2000. But first of all, we're going to take a look at what we actually get when we buy them. So the first thing I did, of course, I measured them. I wanted to know if the numbers were actually correct. So I measured the 6 millimeter edge. And as you can see, it's pretty much exactly 6 millimeters. So they did a pretty good job on this one. Um, then I measured the 8 millimeter edge and as you can see they did a nice job on that one as well pretty much exactly 8 millimeters for both of the 8 millimeter edges and then I measured the 10 millimeter edge and uh, it's pretty interesting that the 10 millimeter edge is actually pretty inaccurate it's much closer to 9 millimeters as you can see here um, the same is true for the other 10 millimeter edge. So both of these are actually a little bit smaller than 10 millimeters, to be honest. Um, but yeah, it's not really a, much of a problem because it affects both of these edges. So it's still symmetric and that is what counts. Now I have one major point of criticism though when it comes to these uh, Beastmaker micros. And that is the rounding. So let's take a look at the first of the 6mm, the smallest uh, Beastmaker Micro here. As you can see, the, the rounding is quite substantial on this one. Nice rounding, I would say. And when we compare it to the other 6mm one, you can see here that it's significantly less rounding on the other one. So one of these uh, edges is actually a lot uh, worse in quality than the other. I mean, in, in hold quality, you know. Obviously, the bigger rounding makes it softer for your skin, less impact on your skin, but it makes the hold, the hold worse because you have less um, grip on this bigger rounding. So this is going to be an issue when it comes to these two edges. So when I discovered this, I decided to check this as well on the 8mm edges. And again, we've got one edge, one of the two, that is significantly more rounded than the other one. In this case, it's the left one, as you can see. Here again, the left one is has much of a bigger rounding than the right one, and this of course affects hold quality. Now, I've previously uh, talked about that actually the only purpose of buying these standardized edges is that all of the edges are actually the same. So if I wanna, you know, I'm buying these Beastmaker edges because I wanna hang on the exact same edges as Dai Koyamada does in his Instagram shots. So now, since I'm already discovering that not even in my package the edges are completely the same, that actually one is better than the other because it has less rounding than the other, um, I can pretty much assume from that that all of the Beastmaker micros across a world, uh, scattered across the world are actually a little bit different. And this, of course, to some extent defeats, honestly, the, the you know, the, the purpose of buying these standardized um, brand edges, so to say. Because honestly, making a 10 millimeter edge from scratch from your own wood is super simple and pretty easy. And I would probably not have bought these things for 33 pounds, by the way, which is not, uh, which is not little for this stuff. Um, if I would have known that before, because I could have easily made them myself. Now, here we've got the two 10 millimeter edges for that comparison. And I have to say that for 10 millimeter edges, they got it right. 
here both roundings are pretty much identical and also both hold qualities are pretty much identical. The only strange thing with the 10 millimeters is that they are actually 9 millimeters. But yeah, I give them that. That's no problem really. Before I mounted them, I thought a little bit about it and decided that I have two options here. I can either, um, you know, do the work myself and, you know, make the edge that has actually less rounding uh, comparable to the other one by simply milling away a little bit of the wood there until both of them look the exact same. Or I could just use the, un, um, you know, the unsymmetric edges and put the worse one to my stronger hand and the better one to my weaker hand. So that's basically what I did. I just mounted the um, the edge with more rounding on the left side, ah, on the right side, I mean, because there is my stronger hand, actually my right hand, and more rounding means less hold quality, and therefore my right hand now gets more of the workout in while on the left side I have the better edge of the bolt with less rounding. So that's how I handled that. But yeah, I think if I would have known that before, I wouldn't have bought the micros and I just would have tried to make them myself because um, yeah, honestly, that's yeah the whole purpose of buying them is really to have a standardized edge. So yeah, that would be my review for these Beastmaker products. The Beastmaker 2000, again, perfect, excellent quality and just looks and feels the same as all of the other Beastmaker 2000s that I've felt so far. When it comes to the micros, though, um, they are not really symmetric and yeah, kind of a strange numbering there and yeah, not really standardized. So a little bit of mixed feelings about them, but I'm, I'm going to use them anyway. I'm already looking forward to these super mini edge workouts. I hope you liked the video guys, um, tell me down below if you did, maybe leave some suggestions when it comes to what I should use the still empty space on these boards for, you know, what should be the experimental holes that I should put there. So I hope you have a great time and I'll see you soon, bye.